Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So this week I wanted to look at YouTube and using YouTube to get your art out into the world and to make people aware of um, you as an artist and sort of comparing that to other platforms like Instagram and Twitter. Is YouTube worth worthwhile? Is it worth the effort? Kind of spoiler alert, uh, in my opinion, yes, I think it is. And as the video goes on, I'll try and explain why I think YouTube is worth the effort. So the structure of this video, we have this little introduction part going to show you me painting another sort of abstract landscape, similar to some of the paintings I've done recently, but not exactly the same. Um, again, as I say, abstract and using this sort of limited palette that I've been working on and trying to get this dynamic sky. The middle part of this video then is looking at the question of can you make money on YouTube? Um, you, one of the differences with YouTube and the other platforms like Twitter is that YouTube does have this partner program, which means that some people anyway are capable or able to make uh, money maybe even make a living off YouTube. So I just wanted to go into some of the numbers and some of the details on that. And then we'll come back and look at the final version of this painting. Now in this video, I'm not going to get into too much of the technical stuff about cameras and lighting and microphones and editing software. Those are some of the things that you do need for YouTube and maybe this can be one of the problems with YouTube it can these can be seen as barriers because they're expensive what I just wanted to say was I'm not an expert in these things but I bought the cheapest camera I could get and the cheapest microphone and the software the editing software I use is open source software it's free and it's called open studio no open shot I think it's called Okay, so this question of is YouTube worthwhile? Is it worth doing? For some people that comes down to the question, can I make money from YouTube? I think it's a valid question to ask because YouTube is making millions, maybe billions of dollars every year. And yes, they provide the platform, they provide the infrastructure, but they don't provide the content. The content is created by independent content creators, um, people who upload their videos onto YouTube. So without those independent creators, YouTube is just a fancy platform. It has no content. So nobody's ever going to go and look at it. So I think it is valid that the content creators should share in some of the profits that YouTube is making. Unfortunately, however, the vast majority of creators will never make a penny from YouTube. Um, you have to meet four criteria in order to apply for the partnership program. If you're accepted onto the partnership program, then you can monetize your videos, provided they meet some other rules and things. So the criteria, there's four of them. Two of them are numerical. Now, as a sort of a data nerd and a number nerd, I love spreadsheets and things. I know that not everybody um, shares that enthusiasm. So I'm going to try and keep this part as short as possible. But I think there are, I have a couple of worthwhile points to make. So to do that, I need to look at the numbers. So the first number is just the number of subscribers that you have in your channel. That's pretty simple. It's a one, th 1000 is the magic number. If you have 1000 or more subscribers, you've met one of those criteria. The second criteria is a bit more involved and it's the number of watch hours that you have on your channel over the previous 12 months. Or if your channel is less than 12 months old from the first video that you uploaded until uh, today. But there's a few things that go into that 4,000 number. So let's say, for example, that we're a brand new YouTube channel, um, just getting started. We're going to produce one video per week. So that's our one video per week. 
Now we're a brand new channel, we don't have any subscribers, nobody knows who we are, that we even exist. So we're not going to get that many viewers per video. Let's say we get 10 viewers per video, at least for the first few videos. Each video is going to be about 10 minutes long, but we can't expect everybody to watch the full 10 minutes. Um, there will be some people who do, there will be some people who watch the first 10 seconds and then switch off. So if we average out the time, let's say it's five minutes um, per person per video. If we multiply all those numbers together over the 52 weeks in the year and divide by 60 to convert it into hours, it comes to the grand total of 43 hours per 12 month period. And we need this number to be 4,000. So as you can see, getting started with a new YouTube channel, um, you're probably not going to meet that criteria. Now, as your YouTube channel starts to grow, there are some ways in which maybe you can try and get to that 4,000 quicker. We could, for example, decide to, instead of one video per week, maybe we produce two videos per week. And as the channel grows, maybe we get more uh, viewers. Maybe we get 50 viewers per video. But we're still way short of this uh, 400 or 4,000 magic number. Another thing we can do is to increase the length of each video. Um, by increasing the length of the video, the average watch time will increase as well. There is a, a sort of correlation there. So let's say we double the length of each video and therefore we just double the watch time. But we're still, we're not even a quarter of the way to the goal of $4,000. My YouTube channel at the moment is standing roughly about this number. Um, it's less than a thousand watch hours over the last 12 months. So even though I'm over 500 subscribers now, I'm you know halfway towards the 1,000, I'm less than a quarter of the way towards the 4,000 number. And that's the sort of trap that a lot of new channels sort of fall into. If you can call it a trap, it's a situation maybe. So how do you get out of that? Um, well, again, you can increase these numbers, you know, the number of videos per week um, and the length, the average length of your videos, you can certainly do that. And that will increase this number over here. But even if, for example, you increase this to three, it's only just pushing you up over the 1000. You're still only a quarter of the way to where you need to be. And three 20 minute videos per week is a huge amount of work. That's not 60 minutes of work. Um, you've got to record the video. You've got to edit the video. In my case, I narrate over the top of it. All of these things take a lot of time. So three 20 minute videos per week is at least a full day's work. Um, and like I said, it's all gonna be unpaid work. So yes, you can increase this number. You can increase the average length of the video, but it's an awful lot of work and it doesn't really get you up above that 4,000 magic number. What we really need to do is to look at this number of viewers per video, because this number is what can push us above that magic 4,000. If you had, instead of 50 viewers, for example, if you had 400 viewers per video, straight away, you're well over two and a half times um, the magic number of 4,000. So this number is really the number that we need to increase. Unfortunately, we don't really have control over this. We have control over the number of videos that we produce per week, and we have control over how long each video is, but we don't really have control over the number of viewers. That comes down mainly to this magical thing called the algorithm. Um, there are some things that you can do to help with the algorithm. And I should say nobody actually knows exactly how the algorithm works and why it recommends some videos to some people and not to others and things. It's all a bit of a mystery. I think of it a bit like, imagine we're in ancient Greece or Rome or something. 
And if you want something, you go to the local temple of whatever god it is and you make some offering and, and hope that maybe the god listens to you. In the case of the YouTube algorithm, um, the offering that you have to make is the like button and comments. The general agreement is that the more likes that your video gets, um, is that's good in terms of the algorithm. It will mean more viewers seeing your, your videos. And that's why you get a lot of YouTubers saying, you know, uh, please click on the like button sort of thing. Um, there is a reason for doing it. And I should say at this moment, uh, if you want to click on the like button for this video or any of my other videos, uh, feel free. It, it is free after all. Uh, and it does seem to help YouTubers. So that was the main point that I wanted to make in this was in order to get above that 4,000, you really need to get these viewer, uh, viewers per video. That number needs to get up. Other things that you can do as well as the like button is also the thumbnail that you produce for each video. The more attractive that is, the more viewers that you usually get. Um, on YouTube anyway, it is a case of people sort of judging the video by the cover kind of thing because they don't have an awful lot else to go by. So an attractive thumbnail can get more viewers. Um, other things that can help, we start getting into all of this SEO stuff, this search engine optimization and using keywords in the video titles and keywords in the description box to describe the video. That can help because some people go onto YouTube and type in a search um, query. So they're maybe looking for ideas on things like watercolor painting or whatever it is. So if you have those keywords in your description, in your description box or in the title of the video, it gives you a slightly better chance of uh, being seen by uh, the person uh, doing the search. Okay, well, that's the end of the number stuff. So we'll go back to looking at uh, the painting again. Okay, well, if you made it through the all the number stuff, uh, thank you for sticking with me. Hopefully some of the ideas were interesting or useful. As I was saying or trying to say with the editing software, uh, it is called OpenShot. Uh, it's open source, therefore it's free. It's not as good as some of the fancy stuff. It's certainly not as good as like Adobe's uh, editing software or anything like that. But it can do a lot and it does everything that I need to do. So getting back to other reasons why I think YouTube is worthwhile. One of the thing, one of the reasons I love watching other artists on YouTube is you get to hear the artists explain what they're doing, what they're trying to do, why they're doing it. And you learn a little bit about their backstory and things and a bit more about the artist. You feel as though you know the artist a bit better. I think with Instagram and Twitter, especially Twitter, I don't think that happens as much. Um, Twitter, you're limited to a, what, a few hundred characters. Instagram, you get a few words plus a bunch of hashtags. Yes, some people upload videos onto Instagram, but even then they tend to be quite short videos without much um, talking. So I think YouTube is kind of unique as a platform for artists, um, as a way of making people aware of the artist, not just the artwork, but the person behind all of the artwork. And I think that's important. So a few quick words about the final painting. Um, two things that are important to me. One, I really enjoyed making this painting. And as I've said before, I think that's one of the main, the most important things in art is that you actually enjoy the process of creating the artwork. And I was happy with the final result. So overall, I consider the painting a success. It is, like I say, quite abstract lots of wet in wet painting and it's kind of um, trying to embrace that sort of nature of watercolor that, that makes it different so different from things like acrylic and oil and soft pastels and so on 
Well, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for sticking with me. Uh, I hope it was useful and interesting and hopefully see you in the next video.